So in this video, we're looking at a different kind of lottery ticket. It's one where we are drawing from one bucket. So see this big container here. In this particular lottery, it's filled with 41 different balls. And they draw five balls from that one container. Now, in this case, the probability of matching the next number they draw is dependent on whether you matched any so far. So each draw changes the number of balls that are left in the container and it changes the number of balls that are the ones you want compared to the ones that you don't want to be drawn each time they pull a ball out of the container. So in this case we're going to use the hypergeometric distribution which gives the probability of X successes or matches in this lottery in N draws, in this case they pull five balls, without replacement. So if they put the balls back each time, that we wouldn't have, be using the hypergeometric formula. So let's take a look at the hypergeometric distribution and do some calculations with this particular lottery that we just watched. Okay, as we saw in that kind of lottery ticket, we have one big bucket here. So one big bucket. And in different states, they have different numbers of balls in these buckets. But in this particular case, they have balls numbered 1 to 41. Now, it used to be in North Carolina that we had balls numbered 1 to 39. But they increased the number of balls so that it reduces the chances that you win. Now with the hypergeometric formula, this, this formula actually looks quite ugly, but what it is, is it's three of these combinations formulas. One here, one here, and one on the bottom. And so again, on your calculator, you want to use the NCR, or on some calculators it will be R choose X key. But so NCR, NCR or RCX. Some calculators are a little different, but this is called the combinations formula. And in this formula, to use the hypergeometric formula, you have to identify four different things. And here are the four things you have to identify. Capital N is what we call the population size. So how many items are in the bucket that you're drawing from? And in this case, that's that 41 that we're talking about. So 41 total balls in the bucket. You also have to identify a little n. And little n is how many balls are being drawn from the bucket. With this lottery, that's five balls they're picking from the bucket. Now r is sometimes a little tricky for people to figure out with the hypergeometric. In this case, it's not so bad. Picture what you're doing when you go buy one of these lottery tickets. You have to pick five of these possible numbers that are in this bucket. And so you have to pick five possible numbers. So suppose you picked um, 3, 7, 13, 25, and 31, just for example. So you're going to pick those five numbers. And you hope those are the ones that they pick out. What R means in this formula is how many of these balls that you consider successes are in this bucket? Well, all five of them, right? So there, in other words, there are only five balls in this bucket that you want them to pick out. And there's these five numbers, whichever ones you picked. So R is equal to five as well. So there are five balls that they're drawing out, and there are only five of them that are the ones that you want them to pick. And then the last thing is X. X is how many successes would you like to calculate the probability of getting? And so X is how many, how many successes are possible? Well, you might, they might pick none of your balls, or one, or two, or three, or four, or they could pick all five of your balls out. So X could be any of those possibilities, zero through five. So if you're, if you're doing a problem, the, you just have to read in the context. What are they asking you to calculate? Now, what most people are interested in with this kind of lottery is, well, what's the probability that they're going to pick all five of the balls out that I want? Because if I match all five, then I'm going to win a bunch of money, right? So 
We could pick five, but we could just as easily pick any of the others. Let's start with zero, because I think this is, this is instructive to calculate what's the probability that you match none of them. And you might be surprised at how high this probability is going to be that you match none of the balls. So let's start with x equals zero, and all we have to do is plug in here and then do the combinations formulas on our calculator. So over here, let's do the probability that we match zero balls and fill in the blanks. So r is five, five choose x, x is zero. Over here we have capital N, which is 41 minus R, 5. So 41 minus 5 is, for some reason I haven't had my coffee. Let me just double check. Okay, 36. I, I know I should be able to do that in my head. I yell at my students for that all the time. Um, little n minus x. Little n is 5 minus 0, 5. All right. Whoops. Sorry for the screen jiggling around like that. So that's the top part. And then on the bottom we have big N choose little n. 41 choose 5. 41 choose 5. Okay, every time I touch the screen it's jumping around a little bit here. So do these combinations formulas. 5 choose 0. Anything choose 0 is 1. So that's easy. 36 choose 5. This is answering the question out of all the balls that I don't want them to pick, the 36 that are not my numbers, how many different ways can that happen? Actually, you know, I can, I can keep that screen from moving so much by making it full screen. So 36 choose 5. 36 choose 5 is 376,992. And then on the bottom, 41 choose 5 is calculating how many different unique tickets are there for this lottery. How many different ways, in other words, can you choose 5 balls from a list of 41? So it's going to be 41 choose 5 on the calculator is 749,000, 398 unique tickets. So what this formula is telling us is that there are 376,992 tickets that would match none of our numbers out of the total 749,398 tickets. So we just divide the top by the bottom, 376,992 divided by 749,398 and that tells us that the probability that we match none of the numbers is 0 0.503. A little bit bigger than 50% chance that we match absolutely none of the numbers that they pick when they do this drawing. Now we could also go through and do the probability of 1. Let's, let's do that. Let's do the probability of 1 and then we'll skip to the probability of 5. And then I'll leave doing 2, 3, and 4 for you and then you can make sure that all those probabilities add up to 100%. So let's do the probability that we just match one ball. Probably not going to win any money if we do that. But we have five, which is in. We're out of the five balls we're choosing, we're going to match one. So that's five choose one. Out of the 36 balls that are in the container that aren't the ones we want, um, we're going to be choosing four that don't match. So that's in minus x, 5 minus 1. Then on the bottom we have exactly the same thing as we did here. How many total tickets are there? 41, choose 5. Now before we do the actual calculations for this problem, I want, to, want us to look at these two and I want to point out a couple of things you can do to check yourself to catch errors, to catch mistakes. What you'll always find here when you, when you do these problems is that if you take the five balls that are in the container that you want, the ones that are successes, plus the ones that are failures, these 30, other 36 balls, they have to add up to these 41. And it's the same thing down here. 5 plus 36 
has to equal 41. So this is just one way to check to see if you've made a mistake. Uh, similarly, on the bottom here, this is saying, well, we're going to get zero matches. We're going to get five that don't match. Zero plus the five has to equal the total five balls we're drawing. Similarly here, if we're going to match one ball and we're not going to match four balls, one plus four has to equal the total n, little n, balls that we're drawing out of the container. So you can just double check that those green numbers add up to the green 41. The yellow number is 0 plus 5 equals 5. 1 plus 4 equals 5. Okay, so let's get to actually doing some calculations here. 5 choose 1 is 5. That just says that if we have 5 items and we choose 1 from them, there's only 5 ways to choose 1 item from 5. Times 36 choose 4. We're going to need the calculator for that. So 36 choose 4. 58,905. So 58,905 divided by 41 choose 5. Well, that's the same as it was before up here in this problem. So 749,398. So the probability that we pick five numbers, they draw the balls, and we match one out of the five, any one out of those five, 5 times 58,905 divided by 749,398. We get about 39.3 percent. So 0.393. So when you look at the probabilities here, it looks like uh, the vast majority of the time we're either going to be matching one ball 39.3 percent of the time, or zero balls 50.3 percent of the time. That only leaves about 10% of the time that we're going to be matching either one or two, sorry, not one, we already did one, either matching two or three or four or five. Now let's, let's calculate the probability that you match all five balls, because that's really what most people are interested in. So probability we match five balls, we'll skip to that one. It's going to be five choose five so we want all five to be successes 36 balls that aren't successes we want to choose zero of those and then the bottom of this formula is always going to stay the same for this kind of lottery ticket 41 choose five so out of five balls there's only one way to choose all five of them one times 36 six choose zero well there's only one way to choose none of them so anything choose zero is one. So on the top we have one times one, which is just telling us that there's only one ticket that matches all five. One out of all the different tickets you could buy uh, is going to match all five. And then on the bottom, 749,398. So this is going to be a very small probability. One out of 749,398. 749, 398. And that's giving us a very tiny probability indeed. So it's really just one out of 749,398. There's a probability that's 0 0.00001333. 0 0 0 0 and yeah, we have a lot of digits that keep on going there, but that's, that's kind of close to what it's going to be. So a little bit better than one in a million shot. Not a whole lot higher than a one in a million shot there. So again, what I, what I want you to do, to, if you really want to make sure that you understand how to use this hypergeometric formula when it comes to lotteries, keep these three results that we just got. Probability of matching zero, probability of matching one, and the probability of matching five. And do these other possibilities here, matching two, three, or four. And then add up all the probabilities you get. The 0.503, the 0.393, the 0.000133, plus these other three probabilities you're going to get. And see if they all add very, very close to 1.0. You might be a little off due to some rounding error. So with this is the method used for all of these lotteries where you are picking multiple balls from one container. 
and you can't have repeats because there's only one of each of these balls in the bucket here, right? Now there's only one more thing to, to cover. A lot of these lotteries have one big bucket that you draw from and then they have one other ball. They pick from another bucket and they call that the power ball. In the next video I'm going to show you how to add the power ball into this mix in order to calculate the probability of matching th these numbers and matching the power ball. So I'll see you for that next time.